Hi everyone, my name is Nithya and you are at my floss tube channel, Daybreak Stitchery. This is a channel all about cross stitch and um, it's not quite the end of the month when I usually check in, but it's close enough and it's a good day to, to rec well, sort of a good day to record today. So I'm just gonna um, check in and show you what I've been working on. I may, this may be stop and start because my neighbor is having their front steps done today, which is like right there. So you may hear some sawing and hammering and things like that. I'm gonna proceed un unless it's distracting to me and then um, this, is anyway. Long story short, this may be a little bit choppy. I may be piecing together bits of the video. Um, I thought I'd record today, even though it's not quite the end of the month because Steve is at, my partner Steve is out today. He's taking my nephews on a bike ride. And so the house is kind of quiet and I can just sit out here. We don't have the best sun today. We're actually on a, today when I woke up and I checked the weather, it because it's been hazy the past couple of days. And I um, checked the weather today and I saw an icon. You know how you usually see the icons for what the weather's like for the most of the day? And I saw an unfamiliar one today. It was a cloud with like these wavy lines coming from it. And it was smoke. We're actually getting some of the residual um, smoke from the wildfires in, in Canada. So uh, a friend of mine was at, she goes walking on Lake Michigan every day, which is that way. <laughs> And um, she said she was only out for like 40 minutes today instead of her usual hour. And she had to come back in. She was feeling it. So we'll see. He's um, Steve went riding with my nephews. And so we'll see how, how they're holding up with that. But anyway, uh, we should get to it because I, I've been off this month. I'm a teacher. We, we um, finished our, our school year on June 1st. So I've just been stitching. I've been stitching like crazy. I have tons and tons to show you. Shall we start with some finishes? So uh, a lot of my, I mean, I, I have a lot of new starts this month, which I'll show you towards the end of the video, but for the most part, I'm trying to finish up whips this year and I'm um, stitching with the hashtag queued up sell. So be trying to, before I start something new that I have queued up, try to finish a whip that's related to it. So this is one that I'm super happy that, that I'm really happy with. It came out beautifully. This is by Shaded Stitchery and it's called Closely Kept. It's number two in the series. So uh, this is a series of kind of floral decorative motifs that Nuri designed based on um, these artifacts that are housed at the Smithsonian Museum uh, here in the U.S. And uh, they're these kind of, how do you describe them? They're the decorative pieces that are in the cases included on tintypes. And tintypes, I had to look it up, were um, photographs that were printed on metal. So they have like a shiny appearance. They're, they're black and white photos that were printed on metal. And they were usually kept in these cases that had these decorative motifs on the, like when you open it up, there's a decorative motif and then the tin type. So Nuri is recreating, uh, using those like decorative motifs in the cases to create these uh, cross stitch pieces. So this is number two. Number one is a really pretty, it's like a single stem flower. And what I'm thinking of doing is stitching them all on this one piece. So this is 18 count barn wood by Picture This Plus. It's one of my all time favorite pieces. And this one was gifted to me um, by Miriam at Marumi Crafts. And uh, so I used, I thought I would go for kind of a color on color, like dark color on dark color thing. And this is a uh, sulky dark chestnut, which is also kind of a favorite of Miriam's. So. And I think I will stitch all of the motifs. I hope there, there will be more. There are two in the Closely Kept series. This is number two. And I hope there will be more. I'd like to create like a whole page of them. So we'll see how that goes. So I wanted to finish this so that I could start on this Juneteenth day, which is also by Shaded Stitchery. So I'll show you that one towards the end of the video um, where I should have plenty of new starts to show you. Okay, this one is... Um, an unexpected finish. So this is called, what is this called? After the Rain. And it's by Hello from Liz Matthews. And actually this pattern is, uh, it's a set of these rainbows. They are actually, each one is different. It's just a little bit hard to tell maybe, but each one has slightly different stitch count and dimensions. You'll see that some are wider than the others. And um, it's a 
five rainbows by five rainbows grid. So it's a grid of 25 rainbows. And uh, I just didn't think I could take doing all of them. They take, it takes a while to do each one and I wasn't feeling excited about doing the whole grid of them. So I just did the four and then um, kind of, it, so this has been sitting as a whip for a while. And then Nati, Stitchy Nati on Instagram started uh, small win, is it small wind cell? Yes, small wind cell. Just to try to like, you know, if you have a project that's close to a finish, just go ahead and finish it so you feel like you have a small win. So I turned this one into that this month. I've been reviewing, kind of going through my whips list and reevaluating, thinking through some things. So this is one that I pulled and I said, just finish it already. So one of the things that had held me up on this is that I had, it's, this is all, I decided to do it in like pink and purple DMCs. This color is actually like this rainbow is showing up more blue to you, I think, but it's actually purples. It's a dark, like a dark muted purple. I think it's that, what color is that? Like DMC 168 or 167 has this kind of like dark grayish purple kind of thing. But anyway, I, so along with all these kind of random DMC pinks and purples, I had kitted up with this. I had also put this specialty floss, which is from Stitchy Stuff Co. on Etsy. They have beautiful flosses too. And this is so pretty variegated floss. And I thought, oh, that's going to be great for this. But what happened is I, I had originally thought, okay, I'll stitch the 25 rainbows and then I'll use this to create some kind of like pretty border along the edge. And I think that also had been kind of intimidating me. It's like, oh, what am I going to do for that border? I have so many rainbows to do. And then I still have to come up with something for that border. So what I ended up doing to keep this variegated thread in it is just, I I started in a and I just stitched diagonals. I just took lengths of thread and just stitched all across the diagonal. So it creates this kind of, it filled in that space and then I could still have a little bit of this. This um, colorway is called Berry Blossoms. Berry Blossoms. So I think it turned out pretty okay. And I'm either going to keep it or um, I might offer it up to a friend of mine for their child, for their room. So we'll see. It's on a 18 count Ada. It's a Mystic Fabrics, but I won't remember what it's called. It's called Reflection, maybe. It might be Reflection or Diversity. Those are the those are two blue grays that I've bought from them before. So it's one of those two. So anyway, that's that, and that's one uh, whip that's down from my massive list of whips that I certainly haven't. Um, helped chip down on chip, you know, chip away at this month because I've started a whole bunch of new stuff. But anyway, we won't talk about that till later. Okay, now I'm um, saving the the biggest one for last year. I had a, I have a huge finish, and this is Magical Carpet Menagerie. This is Miriam's pattern. Actually, it's a set of eight of Miriam's patterns in her collection of animals that are all inspired from like Persian textiles. So there's actually a ninth animal, but it didn't fit, you know, in this piece. So I just, I did these eight. I picked, I, I don't, and I don't remember who's left out. I always forget which one I've left out. Uh, so they're all stitched together. So I started here in the middle and I just thought, okay, what if I, I wanna stitch them all in one piece. What if I keep them all um, along the same horizon line? But then don't worry about how tall or how short, you know. So the height and the depth down there I didn't care about as long as they all lined up across the center. And then they all kind of, <clears throat> I lined them up in the middle here too and worked outwards. So will we remember who everybody is? This is Giddy Crabs, Hazy Hen, Lanky Camel, Prickly Ram. That was my favorite. I love that one. Zippy Dog is down there. A lot of stitching in Zippy Dog. I had Perky Lion and Zippy Dog were the ones that were left. And Giddy, a little bit of Giddy Crabs, too. And they just, a lot of stitching. Uh, Wonky Cat. Funky Peacock. And then Perky Lion. They're beautiful, right? I love how it looks. So this is on an 18-count fiber on a whim, which I think is wheat. It's got, like, um... It's not showing up there, but it's it's a modeled 
brown fabric, kind of like a golden brown, and it does have bits of green popped in here and there, which I think is their wheat colorway. I really like these Fiber on a Whim Adas. They're very, very soft and comfortable to hold. They're, they're not, I don't like uh, as much. I, I stitch on stiff Ada, but I don't like it as much as these softer ones, like Picture This Plus and this Fiber on a Whim. They have these softer ones. So there it is. And I really love it. And I was waiting and waiting to finish this up because uh, I wanted to start Afshan Sampler, which is her border sampler, uh, Miriam's border sampler. So anyway, I thought I had a, I have um, over the years, you know, when shopping at thrift stores, like secondhand stores, tried to pick up some pretty frames, like pretty wooden frames that are all different sizes. And I was so sure that I had a long, this long frame that I thought, oh, this might actually fit this, but it's too long. It's just a little bit too, the piece is a little bit too long for the frame. So I'll have to wait a bit and see. I'm definitely going to keep looking at thrift stores to see what I can find. Um, and then I may or may not paint, um, paint the frame to match, like give it a contrasting color or something. We'll see. So that's that. This one I, I took actually with me. I stitched a lot on this at the beginning of the month and I took it with me because my public library in my town, I, they put out a quarterly newsletter and I love it. When it comes in the mail, I just like... I tell everybody, this is going to be my afternoon reading. I'm going to make a cup of tea and just sit and read it, well, like what's going on at the library. And uh, so in their newsletter, they announced that they were starting a, a crafting group, just like an open circle crafting group. They're calling it Pins and Needles, and they had their first session this month. So I went, and I went, and they said, you know, um, this is open to any any kind of fiber arts. You know, whatever you do, bring it. And it'll just be, you know, we'll just chat. They would, they didn't put on tea this time. But they were going to put on tea next time. And people brought snacks. Just an informal kind of stitching or uh, crafting circle. And it turns out that there were four cross-stitchers. There were eight of us all together. Four of us had brought cross-stitch. Can you believe it? So I had taken this with me and it was, we were all kind of, it was a great moment because we were all kind of petting it, looking at all the details and it was, it was fun to share it with other people. And then I had, um, I have this in a project bag where I have, it's a Silks For You floss. I won't remember the color, but if you want to know, let me know. I'll look it up for you. And um, it's a teal uh, Silks For You floss. And so I have so much of it left. You know, the, the Silks For You comes on these big hanks, so there's a lot of it. So I was able to give little bits of it. I like uh, picked off some of it and gave bits to people too to try out. So that was fun. It was fun to share and and talk stitching with people and yeah, that was a good time. So I think they're going to try to do it once a month. The other crafters there, there was a quilter. She was really interesting to watch too. She sat at a table, a large table, and she we the ta it was a room, kind of a community room, and the tables were a small room, and they're where tables were arranged in a circle, kind of. So she had taken one table, and I was sitting at a table with three people, and then there were um, a couple of knit, like knitters were there. Um, and the uh, woman who organized, the person who organized it from the library was cross-stitching, but had also brought this Edward Gorey uh, embroidery, which was really cool, too. But anyway, the, the quilter was very interesting to watch because she was piecing together these small, like, two-by-two-inch squares, and she had brought her whole, like, stash of them, and she was getting ready to start a new project. So she was arranging them by color and by gradient. It was really, really interesting. I wish we were unprepared because <laughs> we didn't do any introductions. We went just kind of informally. People started talking about each of their works, kind of going around in a circle. So we got... We got so caught up in just talking about textiles and fat, like activities, fiber arts activities, that we didn't do introductions. And um, what was the other thing we didn't do? We didn't get the tea out and um, something else that I'm forgetting. But anyway, but it was still really, really fun. And I, I, I will definitely go next time. I was amazed to see other cross stitchers there. I thought for sure I would be the only one. So that was pretty amazing to find other... Um, stitchers there. Okay, so I just want to straighten out some of these. Those were my finishes. I want to straighten out some of my whips. I have them in a little stack here, but they're getting rolled up. So let me do that and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I actually have one more, well, I'm calling it sort of a finish, but it's also sort of a work in progress that I forgot to show you because it's a crochet one. So I've been crocheting these little hearts. Um, they look like this. Here's a pink one. Here's one from one of my variegated yarns that I've made a cowl with once and I had some leftover. And um, this is because I want to join in on, there's an initiative uh, kind of an informal one called Random Acts of Crochet Kindness, which I didn't know about until a colleague of mine at work sent me a picture earlier this month. She had been traveling the week after school ended, and she said, hey, have you ever heard of this? And she had sent a picture of this. Um, it was like a little sandwich bag, and it had a crocheted flower in it with some beads um, put in. And it had a beautiful little note with like a, an uplifting message and then a QR code where the person could take a picture of themselves with the crocheted piece where they found it and then post it to this Facebook group called Crocheted Random Acts of Crochet Kindness. And so it's this idea that crocheters just kind of create stuff for people to have to give away to people. And then you attach, they have a, a pre on the Facebook group, they have a list of all these different uplifting messages and these QR codes to the Facebook page. And so you attach, like I think what I'm gonna do is make a bunch of little hearts. They're slightly stuffed with like um, my, my cross stitch orts and then also my yarn orts. So they have like a little bit of padding to them. I'm gonna attach the uplifting message, it'll have the QR code, and then I'm gonna put them in places around my neighborhood. So like definitely the public library, maybe the community center, there's like a food pantry. So maybe just have different little spots. Um, I'll put them in little baskets, and then I will um, attach those messages and just see, they're just like little pocket things. You know, you throw them in, I don't know, keep them, keep them on your desk or throw them in your pocket. And this pattern comes from, it's a club crochet pattern by Louise Loops. I'll mention it and I'll put it in the comments below. And it's a really nice pattern. It's actually, I should have, um, I should have made the pieces to show you. It's a really genius kind of assembly for this. Cause basically what you do is you stitch two circles and then you flatten them and stitch them together to make the heart. And it's really, really easy. It works up really fast. Um, this I said was from a stash yarn and I don't remember it, it's not Treehouse Knits. I don't remember um, who the yarn dyer is on this one. This one is a Rowan Pure Life. It's a recycled yarn. The colorway is Revive. I got this on clearance at a shop that I'm going to tell you about in a second. This yarn is a locally dyed yarn called Puppy Man Heathers. It's dyed here in Chicago. And I got this from the shop owner who also dyes this yarn. It's, can you believe, I posted it on Instagram, so some of you know about this already, but there is in Chicago a shop that is both a yarn shop and a bike repair shop. <laughs> so it's been on our list for Steve and I to go see it because he's a bike guy. I'm a yarn, yarn and fiber gal. And uh, so we've been trying to get there for a while. So we had breakfast. It's a really nice, it's, um, what's the neighborhood called? North something. Anyway, it's on the north, it's really far north in Chicago and it's um, almost at the um, city limits. And it runs along, it's right, this shop is just like a block away from the north channel of the Chicago River, which has beautiful trails along it. So we made it, we made it a day. We had breakfast in the neighborhood and then we went to go, we met, um, oh gosh, what are their names? I'm not going to remember the names of the of the people who run the shop, but they were really lovely to chat with and then bought one of their yarns and bought this from their clearance bin and then um, had a went for a nice walk along the trails too. So it was a really good day. So I'll make more of these and I will report back on how how this goes. And I'm hoping to find just some different locations around. Hmm, excuse me, around my neighborhood where I can um, leave these. Let me get a sip of water. <clears throat> okay, so whips. I have a lot of them I've been working on. So first one up, it, I just added this to my queued up cell. So this is Trans Pride Tapestry by D's 20 Stitches. I really love this pattern. It stitches up so, like these borders, these outlines on these motifs, I just love it. It's so comforting to stitch and then now this this month I've been working on the fill-in so I've been working on this unicorn and filling in all these little bits here it's sort of like color block work here 
it's very easy stitching and it's very appealing when a stitch when a section gets stitched up it's very satisfying it looks like it's I was always someone who loved coloring within the lines I found it very satisfying <laughs> so this kind of gives me those vibes <laughs> And uh, so I would love to get this done this year because I have many other pieces by D that I want to stitch. I want to stitch, I have, do you remember last February? I think it was last February for Valentine's. There was a, um, that Iron Maiden <laughs> pattern and like the don't touch me pattern. I love both of those. I have those in my stash, so I want to stitch those. And then um, the new Sylvia pattern. Uh, I love that one too. So I need to wrap this up, but it, I mean, it takes a long while. Like yesterday I was stitching in here. So I did the, and I stitched like all day yesterday and I got through this, I got through this kind of mint called these mint lines, a little bit of this lighter pink. And then I finished up, I had done part of this block here. So I'd finish that up, but, and that was just a hold like all day stitching. So it, it there are a lot of stitches and all of this, so this is all full coverage, the unicorn here. So that will all take some time to stitch. This fabric is by Fiberlicious, Yummy Fibers, and it's called Sweet Tea. And I, it's so pretty, I love it. All this uh, like pretty blue and pink that's happening here. It's more modeled at the top. Uh, then the bottom it kind of evens out and it's a little bit more blue then the pink comes in again at the very bottom so this is an 18 count ada and i'm using the called for dmc except for the body of this unicorn which is supposed to be in diamant but i've taken out all the diamant that i tried i wasn't crazy about it <clears throat> so i just chose kind of a complementary color from my DMC stash that sort of fit all the other colors. So that's just what I'm going with. And it stitches up way faster that way. So, so that's that. So hoping for more progress on this real soon so I can get some of these other projects started too. So next one up is uh, by Bad Vibes Only Shop and it's the Heart Sampler. And so here's what that looks like. I'll bring it up closer because it's a little bit hard to see some of the motifs. So this is a really interesting piece. It has all kinds of different motifs in it. And it's by the um, Fergus, who's Bad Vibes Only. And uh, this is the piece that I work on. I'm stitching this, selling this with uh, my friend Priya. So we did a little Zoom chat this month to catch up. And so the bits that I did while Zoom chatting is I finished this, this ribbon here. It comes down here and ends. So I finished this ribbon <clears throat> and then I started putting in uh, this vine that will have some red flowers on it too. So for this one, there are called for DMC colors, but what I did is I picked uh, just an assortment of different reds and pinks from my stash. Different, uh, you know, there's some coloring cotton here, some silks for you, uh, some classic color works is in there too, and some DMC. And each time I finish a motif and start a next one, I just kind of pick the color at that time. So I finished this sort of um, mauve pink here and went for a bright. This is Flamingo by Color and Cotton, this bright one. So it's been kind of fun just choosing colors as I go along. And I have enough. I have like one or two skeins of each color where it shouldn't be a problem. There's, there's no motif that's so large that I'll run out of. Um, floss, I think. This is on a hand dyed by Rolanda Fabric. It's a 36 count linen. I, I don't think it has a name. I, I'm not sure if the fabrics by hand dyed by Rolanda, I don't shop from them very much. I don't know if they have names or if they're just each one is like a one off unique color. I'm not sure. Okay, <clears throat> so next two whips. I wasn't planning on working on this month, but oh, actually. Can I back up a second to, to, to um, Trans Pride Tapestry? Because I made a note to myself to mention, is everyone watching Electra Silver Fox, uh, who's a new floss tuber, um, uh, cross stitcher, an art student, and like super talented cross stitcher. Uh, he stitches on 
everything that we stitch on, like pieces by D. He's working on the new Sylvia piece by D. Modern folk embroidery. He's doing a piece by Miriam. Like everyone who we know and love, he's stitching on all those pieces. And he did a recent, I just watched this morning. Um, he did his first floss tube a couple weeks ago. And then he did a special today where he went through an, uh, his entire, almost entire set of cushions. He did a, a cushions, cr stitched cushions project for um, his art school program. And it is incredible, like a museum worthy piece. So just go check that out. I'll link his floss tube below and you can check it out. Um, but I wanted to, I made a note to mention because he's stitching on Dee's pieces too. I wanted to mention him. It's an ounce of both. The first videos are just incredible. He's got a fantastic um, eye for design and stitching. I mean, he's an art student, so of course he does, but uh, really interesting and unique pieces with uh, kind of a perspective. I think that it's important for all of us to hear. So, um, I was about to say something. Oh, so I have been going through my whips list. I have a lot of whips, like 100 plus. Okay, it's an, an, an out of control number of whips. And um, so I've been looking at them and trying to decide what am I going to keep? What do I really want to stitch? What do I want to stitch as smaller pieces and just fin get, you know, finish out of the way? And uh, the other thing I did this month is a couple things. It's been a really stitchy month. I've done so many stitchy things, like, uh, stitchy things, you know, the Zoom chat with Priya, and then this pins and needles group at the library, and then Miriam and I went to a local needle workshop that we hadn't been to yet, and so um, that's what led to me restarting one of my whips. So this is Silowitches. Shall I see if I have the pattern? Give me a sec. I want to see if I can grab the pattern so I don't have to put a picture in later. Be right back. Okay, so I got the pattern. So Silowitches, this is by Teresa Colgett, and I'd started this a long time ago, um, not last year, like the year before, I think, and I had done it on an, a 14 count Ada, which came in like a grab bag, I think, from uh, Color and Cotton, a beautiful, it was like cantaloupe or mango, some kind of really bright orange color, which I loved, uh, but 14 count Ada, I, I'm never going to go back and stitch on that, it's just too big, and then Miriam and I had gone to Black Cat Stitchery, which is a local needle workshop in our state in Illinois. It's really far north. It's almost at, it's just like minutes from the Wisconsin border. And it's a very adorable shop. They, um, the owner, Erica, is just a wonderful person to chat with. Everybody there was so friendly. It's the kind of shop where, um, like this sort of thing happened all the time. Like I was waiting to cut fabric and the woman who was in line in front of me, we got to just looking at some random fabrics that were there, and um, she was picking up some 46 count. I talked about how I wasn't sure if I could do 46 count. It looked, the weave looked so small, and she said, oh, there's a, a piece right in the next room on the wall that's stitched on 46 count. So then we put all our stuff down and went over to look at it and had a nice chat about it. So you just, everyone there was so warm and friendly and chatty, and they were doing, we went, we didn't know, but Miriam and I showed up on a day on a Wednesday and they have these open stitching days where people just come and gather and stitch so we got there right when it opened at 10 and there were already people there waiting to sit all day and stitch so um, it was just like a wonderful vibe of it felt like a community space and also a small shop so of course I picked up some things to, well anyway um so Silowitches was model stitched there it was on the wall hung up so I got a really close look at it and I thought I need to get back to this I like Teresa Kogut's faces she's an artist as well she paints a lot of figures and all of her faces have just these little cute very cute expressions on them so these this little this pumpkin face is up here so I thought okay let's get back to this and then I found a piece of fabric at the shop I didn't go too crazy because I'd already um been on some fabric binges last month and uh so I didn't go too too crazy but the picture this plus she said she could cut down to an eighth of a yard so I got this piece of prank it's 40 count picture this plus prank which is an orange there it's more true to that color it's like a kind of a corally orange color. And 40 count means it'll stitch up smaller than on that 14 count Ada I'd been stitching on it before. So 
I use DMC. I also got my first cone of DMC 310. So now I've been trying to use more DMC 310. So this is perfect. Um, so it's a black, I mean, most of it is one color black. And then there are these like accents done in this sort of or, um, yellowy green color. So I looked through my set. You know, I, uh, one of the things I did this month was really got to organizing kind of these random specialty flosses that I had sitting around on floss. You know, they come on floss cards, right? Like a color in cotton or classic color works. They all come on these cards that are hole punched. But I never used to really look at those. I didn't have them organized. They were all sitting on rings and I never really looked at them. So I wound them all up. Like this, um, the one I showed you earlier, the Stitchy Stuff Co. I put them all on these DMC bobbins, and now they're in a box, and I look at them really easily, and I can pick colors. So this is actually Des Desert Mesquite by Cla uh, Classic Color Works, I think. So that's the accent color I'm using. I think it looks great. <laughs> I think that, you know, I had a yellow, so I had some other greens, like, this is color in cotton um, wheatgrass, but it just felt too bright, like bright fabric and then another bright. I was looking for something a little bit darker. And then I also had this color in cotton pear, but that again looked too like matched. What was on the picture, I think, is a good match, but it didn't really match the fabric that I selected. So I'm kind of, I'm glad that I went with something a little bit darker for that green. Anyway, this I only stitched on a couple of days. It's working up really fast. I'm using two strands of DMC on this 40 count. It's a little bunched up. Like th there are several witches on this that are all full coverage in there. So it gets a little bunchy, but um, it's mostly okay. One strand was not enough coverage. So I went with two. So that'll be a whip I'll work on. I have a lifetime's worth of DMC 310 <laughs> to use up. So uh Plenty of, plenty of stitching to be done on that one. Okay, so the next one is also a restart from my uh, whips pile. So this is a seasonal series. Did it have a name? The series doesn't have a name. It's by Summer House Stitch Works, and I know you've seen these before. So this is the winter one, Winter Cometh. It's very sweet. It has this bird wearing a scarf and then nice text in it, nice borders. And there's a... Uh, uh, Four, there are four of these, so there's one for every season. So I'll show them real quick. This is Spring Awakens. I have to be careful because the chart is on the back. Spring Awakens bird with umbrella, very cute. And then um, Summer Refreshes. Not crazy about house stitching, but I think I'll do it. I like this flower motif here. And then Autumn Provides. So it's a sort of, it's a, it's a series where it's a season and then like a verb with each one. So I had, I think what people find unique about this is that it's stitched in these kind of con, uh, complementary or contrast, are they contrasting or complementary? I'm not sure. These uh, different color bars, right? So like there'll be a length of it that's done in one color, a length in another color. So you change the color um, in these vertical bars. So I had started it. I don't have all the called for colors. They're DMC, but I didn't have all the called for, so I was substituting and then... My idea was to stitch all four of them on one piece. So that means though, you have to find a fabric that fits the wide range of shades. Like there are light colors like this light pink here, but also really dark colors like this dark blue. And so the fabric, I, I wasn't crazy about what I did with it. So DMC 310 to the rescue. I'm doing it all in one color. I'm doing it all in DMC and I think it looks great. <laughs> so happy with it. So here's what it looks like so far. Doesn't it look so good? So I have started Winter Cometh here and you're seeing the top of the bird's head with the scarf flying here. Uh, I, what did I do next? I went to spring this, um, I'm putting them right up against each other. So like this is the border for winter and then the border for spring. Oh no, this is the border for winter and then this is the border for spring. So I'm putting a spring right up next to, next to it. Below it here is summer, and then fall will go here. And this is on a Be Stitch Me fabric that does not have a name. So I tried my very first Be Stitch Me, what's it called? Friday night fight night? Friday night fight night? <laughs> 
that's what it's called. Anyway, it's like a, po a virtual pop-up shop that Bee Stitch Me does on their Facebook page. That's basically what it is. I had to look into, I'd, I'd heard a lot of people talking about this. I knew you could buy fabric. I didn't know how it worked. And um, I, I like the format. It's kind of fast paced and it's a quick way to buy fabric. And then you also get entered to uh, win fabric. So I want a piece of fabric too. So I like that. But basically what happens is Brandy from Bee Stitch Me has a Facebook page. And so you follow the Facebook page, you like or whatever, subscribe to the Facebook page. And then she'll post and say, okay, there's a Friday night fight night. <laughs> I doubt that that's what it's called, but I think that's what it's called. There's a Friday night fight night at such and such time. Um, tune in then. So what she will do is at the uh, announced time, she'll post all of these photo albums of fabric. So there'll be like a 36 count album, a 40 count album, uh, like a higher count album, all the uh, different ADAs. There'll be a separate album from each one. And when the albums get with like hundred, it looks like a couple hundred pieces of fabric, a lot of fabric. And so you look through and if there's a fabric that you like, uh, you post in the comment, I'd like this one, please, or me, please, you know, something to say that you're claiming it. And then she just built the, that's it by claiming it, you're shopping for it. And then she bills you and then you pay for it. And if you change your mind, you can like remove your comment. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then you, there's a separate folder for like the giveaways. So you just tell her which ones you're interested in. And then if your name gets drawn, you get, you, you know, you win whatever you commented for. So anyway, so this fabric is really beautiful. And unfortunately it's not, it just had like an identifying code. It didn't have a name. So I don't think it's, I don't think she recreates this. It's a beautiful neutral. It's like a very warm tan color. Very bright. I get like it gives me kind of a sunny feel. And then I think it's a good contrast for this DMC 310. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. This is a 40 count linen. So I'm using two strands of DMC on that 40 count linen. And now this one, for example, I, every fabric is so different. On Scylla Witches, when I'm doing those full coverage witches, the fabric feels very tight. On this one, when I'm doing kind of some of these stitches that are packed in, a little bit close, like down here, these are a little bit more packed in stitches. They don't feel very tight. They feel just comfortable to stitch. So each fabric seems to work a little bit differently, have a different feel to it. Super happy with this. It's working up really fast now that it's a monochromatic piece and I think it looks pretty okay for monochromatic. So we'll definitely keep going with that. It's a nice collection of borders. I don't know if you took a closer look. Here, I'll show you again. Look at this is the autumn one, which I haven't started yet, but each one has a different set of borders. And then within the pattern itself, there are these like motifs that kind of serve as borders too. So it's really pretty. Okay. Next up, I have actually two full coverage pieces that I'm working on now. I ditched one. I had a Hade that I had started. It was like a based on a painting and it had a bowl of fruit and some bottles and things like that. I let that one go. I may come back to it again. <clears throat> but when I was going through my whips list, I thought, nah, I don't know if I'm going to come back to that. But one of the full coverages that I do work on is Steve's bike. So I took a picture of... Um, a pic it's actually Steve's photo of his bike in front of a Felipe Pantone mural in Chicago. And I put it into pick to pat and turned it into a, a cross stitch pattern. And so I was working on that. It was, I was doing 10 stitch on a 25 count fabric. And then what happened is I got sucked into doing a full coverage sal with Alicia at resist stitch, which I'll show you in a little bit because I started it. And that one I just stitched on a stash piece of Ada that I had, 20 count Ada, and I loved it. It was so easy to count the stitches. It worked up really fast. And I thought, why am I, like I never go back to that 20 count fabric, 25 count um, tent stitch. It was start that easy grid. I have a heart. It's supposed to be easy to see the lines that are marked for you, but I have trouble looking at it. I think because of the angled stitches on the tent stitch too, I had trouble counting and refinding my stitches. Anyway, Ada is much better for, for um, full coverage. So I restarted Steve's bike as well. So now I'm starting from a different corner. This is uh, the bottom right corner. 
And so his tire on the wheel is coming in here. And then some of the yellow modeling on the mural is coming in here. This was just a few hours of stitching one evening. It's really, really fast. It works up much faster. So I'm hoping to like touch on this piece every month. I think I'm more likely to do it. This is on just like gray Ada, uh, 20 count Ada, and I'm using two strands. I'm doing a full cross on this one and not a 10 stitch. So it doesn't look like much of anything, but there are three different yellows used here. There you go. I guess when it's close up, maybe you can see a little bit more of a difference. I also figured out one of the things that was keeping me from working on this is that when I'm working on these full coverage pieces, I like to have a working copy printed out that I highlight as I'm working on it. And for this Steve's bike, the pick to pat pattern, it didn't have a black and white version of the chart. It had only a color version. So, but it's fine. What I did is I used the snipping tool on my PC to um, snip a picture of this page of the chart. I put it into a Word document, and then Word has a lot of, it's Microsoft Word. I, I usually use Google Docs, but I like the um, image manipulation tools on Microsoft Word. I, there's a lot more of a variety of what you can do. So you're able to ch slightly change the color and hue of the image. So the image of the chart, I was able to turn it into like a lighter hued kind of black and white uh, print out, then I'm able to print it and highlight it so it's going much quicker. So there's a solution to that. Um, having working off of only a color chart and being able to print it and highlight it was problematic, but now that's resolved. So if any of you need help doing something like that, let me know. I can show you how to do it. It's really easy actually. Okay. Um, do I have any? I just want to check my notes because I have a lot of side notes I was going to mention today, but maybe I'm just getting to them. Oh, I put in a question to ask you. You know, I have this cone of DMC 310 now. I was just asking, wanted to ask you what you thought about patterns that would be great for DMC 310. Do you have any that catch your eye? You know, this, the I picked up my cone of DMC 310, and then like two days later, uh, Jacob, Modern Folk Embroidery, put out that whole series of your Landon patterns, and they are beautiful. The largest one is so striking. The contrast of these, like, dense uh, black motifs uh, on that neutral fabric is really pretty. So um, I'll show you. I, in New Starts, I actually started one of the smaller ones in that series. But So I know, anyway, Modern Folk Embroidery patterns, I think, lend themselves to using DMC 310. I was wondering if you've seen any others that are on your radar that you think would be good. I'm really into um, Quaternion Creations has this Dragons and Apples series. I, it might have been a stitch along, I don't remember, but it has different parts to it. I'll throw a picture up here, but that one would be kind of fun. I think it technically has three colors because there's black and then there's sort of a gray, some of, there's shadowing in gray, and then uh, the apples, of course, are in red. But anyway, I'm curious to see if any of you are working on any pieces. Are you working on anything that's only in DMC 310? And, um, do you have any ideas for patterns that might be great in DMC 310? Uh, Electra Silver Fox, his um, special video, his uh, extra video that he made where he's showcasing his cushions, I think those are all in DMC 310. It's really, um, it's kind of like looking at pencil drawings, I think. There's a lot you can do with just a single color. Um, it is kind of, it is, it has kind of a striking effect to use just black thread. But anyway. Let me know what you think about that. Okay, a uh, whole bunch of new starts to show you. Let me just sort those out and I'll be right back. Okay, lots of new starts. I went, uh, uh, shall we say out of control? Yeah, sure, let's go, let's say it. I've started a whole bunch of things. Some of them are actually projects that I, for which I completed a whip, so they came up, they were queued up in queued up cell, so I could actually start them. Some of them were just impromptu starts. I have no rhyme or reason for starting them besides I was having fun. Okay, so first one up, I've been waiting for ages to start Afshan Sampler. This is by Miriam Marumi Crafts. And uh, I had shown you this fabric. It's a 32 count even weave. This is uh, what's it called? I think it's like terracotta is the color. And um, so I'd shown you this fabric and I had talked about maybe using a white 
uh, thread on a white floss on it, but I have been staring at DMC 820 for months. For months, I've been staring at DMC 820. This shows up, this color is one of the colors I think in Etude by Lena Crostich, which I was working on back in December. So it's a, it's just this beautiful bright blue color. It's dark, but it's kind of uh, got a striking sort of jewel tone to it too. So I've had a skein of it sitting on the back, of, like on the top of my couch for all these months, just thinking I must do something with this. And I've sort of been eyeing it for the, um, one Point Mind has the this sal going on this year, the Over the Moon sal. I'll put in a picture of where it's at, uh, the, you know, after June's installment. That's a really pretty sal, but it's just so big. And I don't think I'll do the whole thing. Actually, what I'm thinking of doing is, um, I should have brought it to show you, the fabric that I won from Be Stitch Me is called Space Rock, and it looks like the moon. But it's just really small. It's like an eighth of a yard. So I'm actually thinking of doing just one of the motifs one of the blocks from that over the moon cell with DMC 310 but revealing the fabric as the moon that's an idea but anyway I had been thinking about doing that project in this 820 and just thinking like what could I do because it's so pretty and, I, and then I saw this fabric sitting against that skein of DMC 820 that's been sitting there all this time so oh let's try that and I love it I think it looks great the coverage actually looks pretty decent. I mean, when I look at it with my eyes, I can tell there are certain places where the fabric is poking through, but clearly you can't, I don't think you can see that. I technically cheated on starting this. I was almost done with the Zippy Dog, but uh, it was the weekend before I was gonna see Miriam for our trip to Black Cat Stitchery, and I thought, let me just start it because I wanna show her what it'll look like. So I had taken both this piece and um, Magical Carpet Menagerie and then this next, um, some of my tiny stitching to show Miriam when I saw her. So this is really fun to stitch. These borders are very pleasing. Uh, this is the halfway point. Am I showing you the whole bit? Yeah. See, it stops right there. So that's the halfway point. So all of this will be recreated on this side for the borders. And then the actual Afshan flower comes in in a block right here. I wanted to get, I wanted to finish the Afshan before showing it to you this month, but I've been working on so many things this month, so just didn't get to it, but... So uh, I love it. <laughs> it's great, and uh, now I can join. I've this will I'll post it this month on Instagram, and I'm joining Megan and Megan, who are the long distance stitchers on in, on uh, Floss Tube and on Instagram, and they um, they're fantastic. They both stitch and finish beautiful projects, and they both started a sal for this Afshan sampler sampler sal. I can't say it. Afshan sampler sal. And so I'm so happy to join them because I've just been eyeing everybody else's Afshan samplers all this time. And now I'm happy to start this one. So I'm stitching uh, two strands of DMC A20 over two of the 32 count even weave. I'm growing to even weave, but you know, it's not as easy as linen. Like the weave is tighter. Um... So it's like a little bit sturdier. It's a really sturdy fabric. It's still not my top choice compared to Ada or like 36 count linen. Those are still my go-tos, I think. Okay. Um, next one. This is by Modern Folk Embroidery. Are you ready for something tiny? I'm experimenting with tiny stitching. Everyone's doing it. So um, as one of the uh, people said at, at that pins and needles group at the library, one of the um, stitchers, one of the cross stitchers was saying that they, all they can use now is 14 count because as they've aged, it's been harder and harder to see. Like even 18 count Ada is tricky for them, which I take for granted. I stitch on 18 count all the time. So I think part of me this month was like, I must try all the tiny stitching I can while I can. So uh, this is when this you see. And it's by Modern Folk Embroidery. And it's one of the, it's the tiniest of the series of your land in that came out this month. Let me hold it up closer. I'm not sure what, where you'll get the best view. Is this, oh, there you go. That's a pretty good view of it. 
It's really sweet. It's got lots of floral motifs. There's like a floral vase here and then one here, a basket of flowers, and then these like teeny borders. And then there are some Verlanden motifs uh, that fill out the bottom space too. So this is on a 40 count Zweigart linen. It's like a, uh, it's like sand or coffee. What? It's like a very basic uh, beige dyed uh, 40 count. And just like a small, teeny tiny, like an ornament cut almost piece of it. And this is used, I'm stitching one over one. And it's uh, using a sulky 40 weight thread. So normally when we cross stitch, we use 12 weight. It's much thicker. That, that would be impossible to do one over one with on this on it on most counts of fabric I think but um way back when I was working on you know I had those two patterns by the work basket rabbit roundel and swan roundel and those I was stitching with sulky 12 weight on an Ada it was a, a picture of this plus Ada mystic and um I ran out one spool of sulky wasn't enough to complete a roundel so I reordered you know then a little bit more to finish those out and in my wish list at sulky I had put in some of these 40 count threads way back when um, because they're 40 count it's not a natural fiber it's rayon so that's it, we're not being eco-friendly here and they come on plastic spools so doubly damaging to the earth which is something to think about um, they come in because it's rayon maybe and not cotton I think it takes dyes differently because there's a whole line of like super dark tones in the 40 weight and even the 50 weight line that are not available in the 12 weight line. So this is dark khaki. It's a dark, 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 dark green. So I had picked up some of those darker um, threads to try out. So that's what I used on this and it's perfect. I mean, if you look really close up, I don't know how, how deep, how close, my camera won't focus, I think, but when I, once again, when I'm looking at it with my eyes, I can see little bits where the fabric is showing through, like in a motif, like in a petal, for example, that's supposed to be full coverage, but you surely probably can't see any gaps in fabric that are not meant to be there. I'm using a 28 size needle, a Bowen needle, and, um, and what else? I have to take my glasses off to see this. Technically, if I look at it here, I can see it and I can stitch with it. If I have really good light, I can use, I, these are progressives lenses, so I have multiple lenses in here, so I can use like my reading lens to do it. But it does work much better if I just take my glasses off and hold it up close. <laughs> so I'm probably, it's probably very damaging to my eyes in the end. I have to learn how to use it with my glasses. And I think just the key is having really good light and figuring out the right position, the right distance at which I need to hold it. I started this pattern one over one on D with um, DMC 310 and look at how bunched up it is. You can see it, but you can't make out the, like the pattern in this border, right? You can't make it out, it's too thick. Compared to this, you can see all the motifs when you um, stitch it with a more slender, uh, thinner floss. So I got a lot of guidance on this from Nati, Stitchy Nati, and um, <clears throat> I just kind of messaged Nati one day. I was like, let me pick your brain on small stitching. And she very generously showed, she sent me pictures of all the different combinations of floss and fabric she had tried. She just stitches a lot of small, uh, tiny stitching like this. Is there a hashtag for tiny stitching? That's a question for all the tiny stitchers out there. Is it just tiny stitching? I'd like to tag this when I put the... Um, updated picture up on Facebook. I've been, um, or on Instagram, I've been putting pictures of this up on Facebook because I'm doing a fundraiser for Brave Space Alliance. It's going okay. It's up to, I, I set the goal on Facebook as a thousand dollars for, um, for the organization and it's up to like 720, um, donated. So that's pretty good. I'm trying to get, I'm a little disappointed that more of my contacts on Facebook aren't donating, especially like colleagues from work who I know and see all the time. But anyway, that's, you, you can't make people do stuff, right? They just have to want to do it. But also I think because I so I only pop onto Facebook for these fun to post fundraisers. I think my algorithm is off. So it's probably like 
nobody is looking at it. So I don't know how else to promote it, but I'm real close to my um, goal on raising a thousand dollars for Brave Space Alliance. That's for Pride Month. I want I they're a local organization here that's black led and trans led, and they provide a lot of mutual aid supports to the to the community. So. Um, I raised for them two years ago, and I missed last year, and then I wanted to raise for them again this month. But anyway, so I've been stitching on any um, pieces that I've been stitching on from members of our community who are queer. I've been posting those on Facebook to show my Facebook people about that. So anyway, this has been on there. So I will definitely, I'd like to maybe try in July to do like one thread a day on this and just see where it goes. Maybe I'll be able to like finish this motif. It's a like a large floral motif with a vase. So maybe I'll get to do that. This opens up a whole new world in terms of space. Because it's really hard to be stitching. I'm hesitant to finish some of the large pieces that I've started. Although I have a large one that I have started this month. It contradicts what I'm saying. But anyway, just go with it for a while. Um, I won't have wall space to put up all the large pieces that I'm stitching. So this is such a nice contrast. I mean, this could technically fit in like a four by six frame, I think, by the time it's done. Or five by seven. I mean, I can get smaller frames now to fit. And those are really easy to find at thrift stores and like antique stores and stuff. So that opens up a whole new world of possibilities there. Okay, next one up is by Electric City Stitches. I can't even like barely look you in the face when I show you what that I've started this. This is a full coverage piece that I just joined it on with Alicia, who's Resist Stitch, who also has like an unimaginable amount of whips. So neither one of us should be starting this. But this is called Dauntless, and it's by Electric City Stitches. And it's a beautiful kind of, it almost looks like a stained glass. It's, it's not totally abstract. It has forms, but um, to me, it looks like stained glass. And I think it's really beautiful and architectural. And I thought Steve would love this one too. So I kind of had him in mind um, when choosing to stitch on this. So uh, this is called Dauntless. And Alicia and I <laughs> are selling it. And we're calling it the Dauntless or Senseless Sell. The two of us are probably more senseless compared to this Dauntless. But uh, I'm only doing part of the pattern. I don't even remember how many, it's an enormous pattern. It's like a 90 page pattern or something like that. And um, this right here is one page. I'm, I'm almost at the bottom, I'm like a few stitches away from the bottom of the page here. This is the top of the page and this is the width of the page. Uh, this is on a 20 count Ada that I have in stash. So because this piece of Ada is not big enough to stitch the whole pattern, I'm only stitching whatever fits on it. So I kind of strategically picked like a, a section of the piece that I think would be nice to stitch that would fit on this pattern, this fabric that I had in stash. So that's what I'm doing. So this, I actually started earlier this month. Alicia and I both start. I need to post this on Instagram. I haven't done, I haven't done, I'm way behind on my Instagram posts, but after this video, I'll post them on there. Uh, so Alicia and I both are starting this and um, where was I going with my comment? Oh, so because I'm using this 20 count Ada from my stash, I hadn't really tried much full coverage on Ada before. I loved it. It's stitched up so fast. This is basically like a day of stitching. You can get tons done with it. And uh, these Electric City stitches are kind of nice. I was picking um, Sarah's brain, Sarah Modcross, my buddy. I was picking her brain on it because she's doing an Electric City stitch. She's way, like, pages into it, I think. She's got a whole bunch done on her piece. And um, <clears throat> she liked, she said the patterns are really great to read, very manageable. It does have large chunks of color. So I would say it's almost like a step up from Sarah's patterns, who are which are really easy full coverage, like smaller full coverage pieces, to go up to this. This is like, there are a lot of colors in this piece. There are like 80, 90, 100 plus colors in this. But a lot of, there is a lot of like chunks of stitching. So like these big chunks here. And there are more big chunks coming in. And then like where the chunks meet are where there's a little bit of confetti, if that makes sense. There's a lot of DMC 310 in this too, uh, because there's like a thick black outline around 
a lot of the different motifs that give it kind of a stained glass look. So the, they'll, you'll imagine some 310, like lines of 310 coming in as well. Anyway, stitching on this 20 count is what convinced me to restart Steve's bike on um, 20 count Ada. It just stitches up so, so fast, even though it's a full cup, it's full X's you're stitching. Tent stitch stitches up faster, but I think it's harder to see on that 25 count fabric. I, I had trouble counting the stitches. This is a breeze to count the stitches on. So hoping to do more work on this. I could maybe try for a page finish on this by the end of the summer. I could certainly try because this only, like I said, was just a day really of stitching. Works up fast. Next one, it's the sows that will get us in trouble, isn't it? Every time there's a new sow out that you want to start, even though you tell yourself you have plenty of other projects to finish first, you just go ahead and start them anyway, like I do. So this is Stitch for Stay, Stitch, Stitch for Sage. I can't talk today. And this is um, a sow that folks are doing to support Sage from Night Spirit Studio, who's going through some health problems right now. And so people are stitching on and shopping on, uh, shopping from her patterns to, to provide some support. So this is Unexpected Visitors. I've had this pattern in stash for a long time, and I just went ahead and started it. And this is not quite as tiny stitching as my Modern Folk Embroidery piece, but it is one over one on 32 count. I think it looks great, doesn't it? This is a um, Zweigart. Mm, Sahara is the color, I think. So it's this kind of like pretty um, yellowy color. <clears throat> and it's looking good so far. The one over one is going great, I think, on this. I'm using the called for colors. Oh, no, that's not true. Uh, no, I had to substitute some of the colors. I, um, I mean, DMC 310, obviously I have. I think I used it. I don't remember what the called for. It's a DMC white, but I don't remember if it's Blanc or B5200. Um, and I may have substituted one or the other. And then the red I picked from Stash, it's uh, maybe DMC814. I don't remember, but it's not the called for one. But it, I think it looks fine. <laughs> it's looking great. And I'll definitely keep this going. It's beautiful. That flowery border is pretty, uh, like, um, I like how clearly the motifs show up. Like that, you can clearly tell that that's a house, the fire, this UFO here. It's good fun to stitch on that one. So that's called uh, Unexpected Visitors, and the hashtag for that is hashtag Stitch for Sage. Uh, any patterns from Night Spirit Studio, you can stitch and provide some support to Sage, the designer. Okay. Um, I started this Juneteenth day. This was what I had queued up after finishing Closely Kept, which I showed you in the finishes earlier. So I have the teeniest of starts on this. Um, this also is on a 32 count. Uh, what's the best view? That one maybe. It's on a 32 count Zweigart uh, even weave, and I'm stitching it one over one. And it's got a beautiful set of borders at the very top. So that's what I'm starting on. It There's this um, North Star and then some moon and tinier stars and then some different... Um, I have to look up what this... Each bit on this is very symbolic. So I have to look up what all that means. Um, this is on a very precious piece of fabric. It's on... Uh, this is not Zweigert. It's picture this plus. It's a dill, which is a discontinued color, and it's really beautiful. I've stitched other things on this, and um, I don't have much of it left. So I think it's a perfect... All these colors are looking beautiful on it so far. And I'm using the called for color, the D called for DMC, because there's some symbolism around the colors, too. So I don't want to muck around too much. Um, with substituting colors. So I love this blue. I think it's DMC 308, maybe. It's very pretty. It's like a another kind of bright. Do I have a little bit of it? It's this blue right here. It's sort of a bright blue. Very pretty. So anyway, that's also been a joy to stitch. And I, I love that it'll also be a little bit smaller. It'll be easier to frame and put up. And I really wanted to finish Closely Kept. I finished it just two days before Juneteenth because I wanted to start this on Juneteenth. So I was able to do that, so yay. 
There's a new sampler from Shaded Stitchery that is also really beautiful. So maybe if I can finish this with it from between now and next June, I can maybe start that one next June. Maybe that'll be my next queued up piece. Um, okay, I have one more new start to show you, then we can talk plans. Okay, so this one <clears throat> was also a piece that I had queued up for queued up Sal, and it's Mermaid's Folly by Courtney Collection. There's a picture, and then there's what I've started so far. <laughs> I've started um, a corner on this side. So here's the thing on this. Okay, so fabric. Floss and fabric. Floss is DMC 3808. I picked up a cone of this one as well. It's just like ultra very dark teal, I think is what it's called. It's one of my favorite DMC shades. And uh, it's awesome contrast for this fabric, which is by Mislaid Pages. It's a fabric I've been staring at for months and months. It's called Bayou. And it's always been, it's, it's a yard of fabric. So it's a huge piece of fabric and it was gonna be an investment. And I just went for it. I knew I was gonna be starting this Mermaid's Folly and I thought it just looks like water. It's gonna be pretty. But look at all these different yellow tones that come in. I love it. I think it's gonna be so, it's already so pretty. Uh, I love it. Perfect coverage, even though this also is a 32 count even weave. I think it's looking pretty good in terms of coverage. I'm not, um, not bothered by it. When I look at it closely, I'm seeing some little gaps, but I think I can live with it. From far away, you can't see any gaps or anything. So this is a very clever pattern because when you get this pattern, <clears throat> you're actually getting four different patterns in the set. So it's four separate charts. So it's a huge, it's like a huge, almost like a book sized packet that you get when you order it because there's a full chart of the big pattern with this, there's like a dragon mermaid and like this figure here, which they're calling old man. Then it's recharted with just the old man, then recharted again with just old man and mermaid and then just mermaid and dragon and just dragon. So I'm Stitching Mermaid and Dragon, this version. And the reason why it's recharted is because you'll notice it has these really pretty curved edges and then like these floral motifs, right? Well, if you were just to stitch Dragon, for example, you'd have a curved edge on one, but it would have, be kind of a squared edge there. So it's recharted to give you a curved edge. And then to like, the motif kind of changes a little bit because um, you no longer have her hand, you have like something else. There. So it's recharted with that in mind so that you have a proper curved edge going all around no matter what var variation you do. And then it fills out if there are any kind of motifs from the figure that's not being included, that's fleshed out with like some other motifs to fill out that corner. So my start here, mm -hmm. looks like this and it'll be just mermaid and dragon. So when you get to the other side of the mermaid, there'll be a separate curved edge charted out. So works up fast. I'm using two strands and uh, I've, I have a working copy I'm using. I highlight, I made a copy and then I'm highlighting as I go along. It's working up fast. So that one too, I feel like if I can just do one, one time a month on it, I can, make significant progress on it. <laughs> this one was on my radar because of Abby, Abby Bella Stitch. She started it last year as her birthday sal. So it's the Bella Stitch B-Day sal. Bella Stitch B-Day sal 2022 is the hashtag for it. So I'm finally joining in. <laughs> it's been more than a year later, I think. Okay. Um, plans. Let me come back. I'll be right back for plans. Okay, so plans. Uh, lots of plans. <laughs> Stitch everything. <laughs> I mean, I have a, a couple sales I'm gonna join. I'll tell you about those. And then um, just trying, you know, as usual, trying to chip away at whatever I've got. So uh, can I read you a little poem? This poem is by Rosemary Watola Trommer. She's a poet from Colorado here in the U.S. And this is called a thank you letter to the pan. Thank you letter to the pansies. Pansies are 
um, this flower. And uh, Miriam and I are starting a cell. And uh, in order to understand the hashtag for the cell, you, um, I'm, you're going to hear this poem. So this is, again, thank you letter to the pansies. <clears throat> Here's what it sounds like. For though it is cold and bitter, you raise your bright faces and radiate loveliness, as if to prove what is delicate can thrive in adversity. There is so much chill, and sometimes I forget I can meet bitterness with softness. I think I, too, must learn to speak the language of sharp. But you, pansies, purple and yellow, white and maroon, you remind me that softness can be resilient, that one small beauty changes everything. And if today we are able to shine, despite cold, despite callousness, then shamelessly, splendidly, let us shine. Isn't that lovely? That's... that's um, I find that really touching, one, because I love nature and all of the, meat, you know, um, everything that comes out of observing nature, all the emotions and thoughts and creativity that comes out of that. But also, I feel like I've been, I've had a really rough year at work over this past year, and I have felt a lot of bitterness and sharpness. And I do think I want to be more thoughtful and mindful of that. <clears throat> So this poem really spoke to me. So the last line is let us shine. So Miriam and I are both in July going to start Pansy Bloom by our friend Sarah, who is Mod Cross on Etsy. And uh, we're calling the hashtag, hashtag let us shine sell. So please join us. Um, Sarah's been so busy with the farm this month. I, I think we'll get to see something from her at the end of the month, but I know it hasn't been as stitchy a month she would like having the kids at home and then having so many farm duties. So, um, we can still have her patterns live, uh, live through us. We can stitch on those and, um, show some, show some appreciation that way. So we're both excited to start that. Uh, it's, Sarah had actually sent me... I picked up a digital copy of the pattern, but then Sarah also sent me a paper copy, so I'll be able to print and highlight that. And she sent, uh, she kitted it up for me. She sent me all the DMC. Isn't that lovely? I can't wait to start on that. I have a piece of green linen that I'll be stitching on, a dark green, almost like like this shade of green linen, dark linen. That I'll stitch on. And then um, I've been watching... Uh, Lala D stitches, who I've mentioned before. I love her. She's delightful. She's a delightful person. And um, she just put out a video like yesterday. I watched it this morning how she's doing a sci fi July. <laughs> she's stitching on a lot. She's also like a sci fi geek, like I am. She loves Star Trek, from what I can tell, as do I. And um, she, so she's stitching a whole bunch of sci fi patterns in July. So I may, I've asked her in her comments if she has a hashtag for it and if it's okay to join in, because I love that kind of stuff too. And I do have whips that are science fiction related. So that might be a good way to catch up on some of those or put some work into those. So that may or may not happen in July. I'll keep you posted on that. And then um, I've never started one. But I have in my stash patterns by Stitchy Princess. And uh, Stitchy Princess has been, uh, you probably already follow her on Instagram, but she's been posting just the most like horrific, heartbreaking pictures of what's going on in Ukraine. And um, every time I see, I forget about it for a little bit, and then she posts updates, and I look. I buy, I try to buy, like, one or two patterns from her every month. It's kind of, like, my way to support. She uses it to support her family and the community there. And um, I have, you know, there's, like, four or five patterns that I really love, and sometimes I just buy them over and over again. Just kind of like that's my way of giving her aid for that. So just um, I mentioned her not so much because I don't know if I'll start a pattern by her next month, but I wanted to just have it on our radar <laughs> that um, those little purchases we make. On, and then she keeps putting co coupon po codes on them. And part of me is like, don't put coupon codes up. Let us pay the regular price for them so that you can get whatever aid you need, you know. Um, but that's just a reminder that if we have like a, you know, few spare dollars and um, it's okay to buy repeats of patterns if it means it's going to a you know a good cause so okay I'm gonna pause here and then we'll do some quick garden talk and then it's time to go I'll be right back
Okay, so garden talk today. Um, I'll show you some updates from the nasturtiums, which I planted last month. They have been the great joy in the garden this, this June. I don't have a lot of plants that are flowering in June. We have a little bit of a pause between all of our spring bulbs, those Siberian wallflowers I showed you last month, and now this has been the next thing to bloom. So um, I've planted different varieties of nasturtiums and kind of, they start really easily from seed. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see my tray. I have a couple trays of seeds back here. They start like within a few days and they're very sturdy plants. They're easy to start and grow from seed. And um, thank you to, I'm not gonna remember who it is, but I know who you are. There was a commenter in my last video who reminded me that nasturtium seeds, you can save seeds. I'm trying to get better at seed saving so that you don't have to buy new seeds every year. You can replant from what you have. And nasturtiums, you can definitely do that with. So thank you for that reminder. These have been popping up in the most beautiful orange and yellow and red shades all over the garden. I kind of strategically put them into places where I knew there were gaps. I put them into some planters too. I, I have just empty spaces. I've been putting in these um, starter, these nasturtium seed starters, and I, I love all of them. There's this um, orangey, beautiful orange tone with these variegated leaves. That's been really pretty. I have some like bright yellows with like these maroon and um, lines in them. That's been gorgeous. And then my favorite has been this very unexpected kind of peachy tone uh, that popped up just a couple weeks ago. I love it. It looks sort of like this papery, thin petal with all these different peachy oranges in it. It's been so, so pretty. Really enjoyed having those in the yard. And then uh, we had an unexpected pop of color in this red clover that I planted. It's supposed to be a, a plant that has a really good, um, like, uh, I don't know exactly how it works, but it's basically nitrogen fixing, I think, which is, is that it stores a lot of nitrogen and then when you um, mix it back into your soil maybe it um, provides nitrogen that can be used by other plants. So I put, I think that's how it works. I need to look up exactly how nitrogen fixing plants work, but I, I it's got to be something related to that. But anyway, I put down this clover, one because it it's red, <laughs> So it provides some pops of color in the garden. Two, because of the nitrogen fixing. And um, three, because it's in this bed where we do the corn. And the corn has been an utter disaster this month, but we have a few um, plants that are growing. And um, that is a plant that requires some good nitrogen in the soil. So we're hoping that it will um, help that bed eventually. Not If not this year's bed, the next year's bed, it will help that. So that's been um, giving some beautiful color and it has like this gradient of red. The tip of it is like the lightest pink and then it goes to pink and then deeper red. So that's been really pretty. And then um, what else? Oh, the sunflowers. So we have, uh, I think last month I showed you like, a, you know, we're removing, we're slowly removing chunks of our lawn. So the biggest section we have removed is like a, a stretch of it along the fence that is about, mm, just under two feet wide and it runs along the length of our, of our fence which is about 12 to 15 feet long and so the far end of that there's a three foot by two foot space that I've put full I've put sunflowers in it's just full of sunflowers we enjoyed the sunflowers so much last year and can you believe it I only grew three <laughs> sunflower plants only three because we didn't know in our, when you start seeds, you never know how seeds are going to do in your garden, in your spaces. So every time you start seeds, it's kind of an experiment. Now I know, for example, and I know nasturtiums grow really well, and I know that sunflowers do really well after having success last year. The only issue was that we planted those three sunflowers. They all bloomed, all beautiful, three different varieties, but... Um, we have a lot of squirrels. I can see them right now. They're just like having a good old time out there. Um, we have squirrels that come to the backyard and all three sunflower plants were taken down by squirrels because they jump on top of them thinking that they're going to get the seeds, even though the seeds haven't developed yet in the middle of the flower. And the plant can't always take the weight of the squirrel or the like force with which it jumps on it. So we'd wake up in the morning and find like a downed stalk and it was devastating because you wait like months for the sunflower to get tall enough. We grew like a 
some kind of monster variety last year. A mammoth, mammoth, a mammoth sunflower, I think. So it grows up like 16 feet in the air. It like towers over everything. And then it's got this enormous flower on it. We were able to see the bloom, but uh, very soon after it was taken down by the squirrels. So anyway, it's very hard to keep squirrels out of your garden. But one of the things that I read, a suggestion I read was that with sunflowers especially, um, there's power in numbers. So if you plant like a whole patch of them, then maybe, you know, the squirrel will get at one or two of them, but maybe not the entire patch. So that's what I've done. So in this three foot by two foot space, there are about 20 sunflower plants in there. I started about 12 of them in March from seed, put those in the ground when they got a little bit taller. And then I started another batch, uh, maybe a month or like six weeks later so that we would have blooms at two different times. I'm trying to get better at doing that too. One of the strategies for having constant color in your garden is to, is it called su succession planting? I don't remember if that's what su succession planting is, um, but it's the idea that you can start kind of have a rotation of what you're starting. Um, no, that's not right not a rotation, but like start, start batch, start seed, seeds in batches. So you start some in March, start some two weeks later, then more two weeks later of the same variety of plant so that there's always something blooming. So when the first batch that you started the earliest blooms and finally dies out, the next one is coming up and then the next one, next one. So, um, Anyway, so uh, the sunflowers all have buds on them. We're getting very excited about it. And so far, I don't want to jinx myself, but so far, no squirrel activity. Because even last year, as the buds were forming, we already saw squirrels kind of sniffing around. So I'll keep you posted on that. But uh, we made it to a fantastic place, which I, I only knew about minimally and read more about afterwards, and I wish we had spent more time there. So there's a garden center in the south suburbs of Chicago, way south of Chicago, called Possibility Place. And we didn't know this at the time, but they're spent, all they do is native plants, plants that are native to our part of the world. And so um, they are not open to the public, you can request to visit them. They have they raise plants in greenhouses. And then rarely they open up to the public for a sale. They'll sell um, native plants in pints for like five bucks. And so you get all these varieties of native plants that are not sold in like the big garden center, the you know, big box kind of garden centers and things. So I, we went down, Steve and I drove down, we made a day of it. We had lunch and went to this place and we picked up three uh, plants there, which I'm super excited about. One is a liatris, which is going to have the spike with beautiful, pretty blooms on it. And I keep hearing about it in my favorite garden podcast, which is um, Let's Argue About Plants which I love. And they bring up Liatris all the time. So I'm super excited about trying that one. And um, that was a great visit. I wish I had no, I didn't realize that all they do is native plants. I just thought it was a garden center and then they happen to have a sale. Anyway, we'll spend more time. Next time we get a chance to go, next time they open their doors, we'll spend more time and get to learn more about some of those plants too. But uh, I think that's all I have for you today. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for listening. Hope you're having some um, excellent stitching time. I know I am. I'm enjoying every second of it. It's a precious, precious thing to have all this time to stitch. And I love every moment of it. And uh, I will put pics on Instagram. So I'm sure I'll catch up with you there. And then I'll catch up with you at the end of July too. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye. Hey everyone. Okay, so one last thing. I forgot I picked something from the garden to show you and then I forgot to mention something huge, another huge stitchy activity that I did this month. So I'm going to take it on right here if you're okay with that. So um, I picked, isn't this beautiful? This is a um, leaf from my red sorrel plant. It's called Bloody Dock also. And it's a, a leafy green. You can eat it. You can use it as a salad green. We have never tasted it before, though. We've never tried. And um, it's got these really pretty veins in it. And when you um, break the stem off, it actually has a like a purpley red color to it. So there's some of the juice. I wrapped it in some napkins so that I wouldn't get all over everything here. Isn't that so lovely? It's got kind of a, like a leathery texture to it. It's got a really thick texture because this particular sorrel has bolted 
That means that um, like a lot of your green, I guess most of your greens, eventually they get to a state if, you, if you're not harvesting from it. When you harvest leaves from a plant, it's telling your plant that it can grow new ones. But if you don't harvest from your plant, eventually your plant is like, well, I guess, I'll, I guess I've grown all the leaves you need. And then it starts growing flowers and seeds. It goes to seed. So my bloody dog has gone to seed. So it has these stalks coming up. It has little seeds growing. Um, so that makes it like a li people say that it gets a little bit more thick textured to chew on when you wait. You can still eat it, but it um, after it goes to bolt, it can be a little bit tougher to eat. But anyway, I just love looking at it. I think it's so pretty. I'm going to see if I can put it in, like, um, put it into something and flatten it out. It just has a pretty look to it. So um, I picked this to show you because I forgot to mention a really cool thing that I did this month. Catherine, who is um, Neat and Not by the Sea, very generously hosted a Zoom chat. Actually, she and I, I suggested like, oh, you know, okay, back up. So she's, if you watch Neat and Not by the Sea, she and Victoria, her friend Victoria, do a, like a fantastic, they're one of my fave floss tube channels. And um, she's been dying, Catherine has been dying, natural dying a lot of her own fabrics. And they look outstanding. She's got like a rainbow hue of all these beautiful colors from all different natural materials. And so I mentioned when she's been showing it the past couple of videos, she's been showing that. I just mentioned like, hey, Catherine, like, why don't you do a fundraiser, like, Zoom chat and tell us about it. I bet people want to go, would want to do it. And we never got the fundraiser bit, you know, sorted out. But Catherine very generously scheduled a time where she could Zoom and just like show us what she uses for everything. So she had, it was awesome. She had like um, plants to show us. She went through the entire process of what she actually d like puts into the different pots and how to, how to boil, what to boil at what times, how much you would need, um, how to um, kind of set the color, what you use to set the colors. And um, <clears throat> I actually, I can't find it now, but I had set aside, hang on a sec. Sorry, it's going to get a little loud for a moment until I find it. I don't know what I did. Oh, here it is. Before the Zoom chat with Catherine, I actually just thought, oh, well, I wonder if like this bloody dock would produce any color because it's got color in the stem. And unfortunately, like juices don't serve as dyes. It's the other, like the plant material itself is where the dye colors and dyes come from. So that juiciness in the plant didn't do me much of anything. But before meeting with Catherine, I thought, oh, let me just give it a go and maybe I could ask her some questions about it. So I... <clears throat> Dyed this was a DMC Blanc. So let me hold it up against paper towel so you can see how it measures up to white. So there's white. This started out as a DMC Blanc skein. And then I put it, I had no steps on procedures yet because I hadn't met with Catherine yet. So I didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't like, now I know there's like, you have to do something to it first and then add the dot, the plant material. And then, you know, there's stages to it. I instead put the DMC skein into a pot I boiled the water and I threw in these red sorrel, these uh, bloody dock leaves, some stems and leaves. I chopped up really fine and put in there. And it had the very lightest kind of almost unrecognizable pinkish hue to it. So I was like, well, this is going nowhere. So then I threw in some red, red tea, some rooibos tea. I have some old tea, like five-year-old tea bags that were gifted to me and um, I hadn't used them yet so I threw like four of those tea bags in so this is really a tea dyed um piece of thread but isn't the color is very nice in it isn't it, it makes me want to try dyeing some fabric because I got more color out of it than I thought but it's from the tea this color wasn't from the bloody dock it was from the tea but anyway, um, like a public thank you to Catherine because that was a very cool thing to do. And uh, we put it out, both of us kind of um, put it out on Instagram to see if anybody, you know, we opened it up. If people wanted to join in, they could join in. So it was a small group of us. Miriam was there. Um, yeah, just a small group of us. Anna was there, Anna Aguayo. And uh, uh, con a someone who uh, Catherine knows too was there too. So it was fun. We got to hear about that and it seemed very doable after Catherine went over it. So, and she very generously, she showed us like some of her plant dyeing books. And so she made like a little bibliography for us and it was really great. Like one more, like it's been a month of really great um, social stitching. And so that was just one more 
piece of that whole, um, of the, you know, all of those activities. So thanks, Catherine. And thanks everyone for, um, sticking around once again. <laughs> and, uh, I hope to catch up with you soon.